So I just wanted to introduce ourselves. My name is Minera Ravji. I'm a real estate agent in the community. I know quite a few of you from working together in the community and a few of you from the elevator. So nice to put a name, a name to a face. Um, this is Claire, Claire Pratt. She's the owner of the Next Step Forward, which is not just a decluttering company. I'll let her talk about it. And lastly, you're gonna meet Geet and actually Samantha from Diamond Storage Solutions. I don't know if you have ever been to this complex. It's amazing. It's not just storage. There is a wine cellar, there's shredding services, there's actually kitchen and closet design services as well. Um, so we, we just all came together because we feel we have some value to share with you guys in all different steps of the process. I'm gonna start from the beginning. Claire's gonna talk about you know the whys and hows and Geet and Samantha are going to talk about how to tie it all together, okay? Now, if you guys have any questions, what we would suggest is hold on till the end. We're going to have a bit of a panel, so you can ask as many questions as you like, and we'll be able to answer them, okay? Awesome. So first step is learning how to use this thing. Okay, <laughs> step two, we're done. Welcome. <laughs> so this is a little bit about me. Um, like I said before, this could totally be a sales pitch because we do offer full service real estate services, uh, but it's not just about that. This is about my story as well. For being a real estate agent, having listings, working with people who are downsizing and people who are moving up is an occupational hazard for me when it comes to clutter. Because when we close people's properties, I'm always somehow taking home a lamp or a bowl and I have all kinds of stuff that I should be getting rid of, but either it's sentimental because my client gave it to me and they really loved it and I just didn't want to hurt their feelings, or it's because we were closing and that psh, that cupboard was there and I had to get it out and now it's in my it's in my locker. Why? I don't know. It's, it just we all collect stuff, right? How many of you are collecting things that you do not need to collect and you know it, <laughs> right? Why do you, why how how come you haven't got rid of it? Any ideas? Are you attached to it? Do you have time? Maybe you just don't know what to do with it, right? It's Tell you a secret. This is it. Maybe you'll use it someday. Oh my goodness, jars are like my kryptonite. I am going to use this jar at some point in my life. I have like 20 of them, none of them have lids. It's like Tupperware. So I think where you kind of want to think when you're, you're starting your decluttering process is why are you decluttering? You know, what is it about, what, what is it in you that's saying, I need to get rid of this stuff? Is it because you need more space? Is it because you're feeling overwhelmed because there's just so much stuff? Or is it because you need to do something, like you need to move, um, or you need to make space for a new baby, or something like that, right? You need to think about your goal, you need to think about your why. We're also gonna be talking about key areas in your home to focus on. So, you know, especially in my process, when clients are coming to me and they wanna sell their home, we, they ask me, what should we do? Should we renovate? Should we start, you know, do we need new paint? We, and I say, all you need to do is clear your countertops. Start there. Start getting rid of everything on the shelves. That's the number one staging secret. Don't tell anyone, because I'll lose my job. But really, and maybe Claire too, no, Claire, you're gonna, you're going to keep your job going. <laughs> um, but really, there's a few key areas that you can start with that you, you don't even think about. Like for me, it was my locker. I was spending a lot of time trying to clear out my cupboards in my kitchen. And a lot of you here are from Harborview Estate, so you know that they're not very deep. The other thing that I just don't understand is that overhang over our, our sinks is not doing anything for me. So I've always been trying to work on those areas. Um, the bathroom underneath the sink, it's another, if you have an original vanity, it's another area that, you know, is just not enough room. So I always try to work on that. But what Claire actually taught me was to start with my locker. And once I was able to clear out my locker, which was actually low hanging fruit because it was a lot of just garbage that I'd stuffed in there over the years or through moves. Once I got rid of a lot of that stuff, the stuff that was in my kitchen and under my bathroom and all of that, I started moving it. And eventually I realized I don't even need that stuff. So it just actually went to the bin. So think about where do you start? 
you might not know, and we're, Claire's gonna go into that a little bit for you guys. And don't do it alone, or <laughs> take a staycation to do it, because once you start decluttering, it's not a matter of, okay, I, this, I don't need this. I've got 20 of these, let me throw them away. It's actually, oh, oh yeah, I remember getting this when I went to this bar and this happened and this happened and 20 minutes have gone by and you've been sentimental and you're probably gonna put it back in the drawer, right? So I think it really helps to have someone who is objective, who's neutral, who's not connected at all helping because they can help you make that separation and if you want to do it yourself, honestly, my dream vacation, I know this sounds really silly because I should want to go to the Bahamas, but I really just want to clean my car. Like that's all I wish I had time to do, right? So I really feel that it's important to actually engage people. Sometimes it costs money. Sometimes it's just getting ideas and it's, you know, professional organizers, um, but it's also handy people, like a handy, handy man or handy woman. In your um, gift bags, there's contacts for people that can help you. We've also got Kyle here from Got Junk. Just do a shout out to Kyle. I work with him on almost every project. You don't realize how much junk there is and what a good feeling it is for someone to come in and you just look the other way and then they just take it. So, um, and actually Kyle's got a really good deal as well. So we'll, we'll talk to him after when you guys get a chance. All right, so here's some, just some examples of some of the real time decluttering that we've done. So this was at 35 Mariner. You can see the space that you get. This was actually not even a functional office. After a while, they were using it and then after a while, because things just started to build up, I found that they were working at their coffee table. They actually bought a coffee table that had one of those sections that pull out so you can use it as a table because they couldn't use their tent. This was another uh, favorite of mine. It just, it was, it, decluttering is not just about getting rid of stuff. It's about choosing stuff, choosing the right stuff. So instead of maybe having chunky furniture, having more streamlined furniture, it gives you a little bit more room. So I've given you guys a little bit of a start, but I'm gonna get right into the meat and potatoes. The real reason why you're here is to hear from Claire and she's gonna take it away. Great. Thank you, Lily. All right. Whoops. Whoops. Got it? Okay, I'm just making sure that I know how to press those buttons. Um, so thank you everybody for coming. Oops. Um, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the whole decluttering process. Um, I'm specifically going to talk about condos. There's, I could talk forever on it, but I'm not going to do that. But there are three things that I want you to take away today. If you can't see it, you're not using it. That's the most important one. Um, use your imagination. So you can use things differently, and I'll talk a little bit about that as I go forward. And it's a process. It's not going to happen all in one day. Okay. All right, so what's it all about? So it is about balancing what you need, want, and love with the space you have. It's that simple. So why organize? Well, of course, uh, to give you more space, but to make your space more functional, to provide easy access to your day-to-day -day items. There's nothing worse than trying to find something in that closet where everything's gonna fall down on you. Um, to make you feel good. Study after study after study has shown that decluttering and living in a decluttered space makes you, um, is good for your emotional and physical well-being. All right, where to start? So start small, because you don't want to spend, you know, your whole day decluttering, because then you're just going to get frustrated. So I always say, start small, reorganize under the bathroom and kitchen sinks, because you know very well there are lotions, potions, and lotions that are under the sink that you haven't touched in years. The one thing I'm going to say here is when you live in a small space, don't buy in bulk. Do not buy 10 things of shampoo from Costco just because they're on sale. 
because that's just going to be a waste of space and you're not going to use it. Who needs 10 things of shampoo, right? So nobody. Um, and it actually ends up costing you more to use up all that space than it does to actually make any savings. So I have some, I have gone through, um, I've worked with Manera on her whole space and uh, I have some ideas about the kitchen. So the kitchens that I've seen in these condos are very tiny. Um, so I suggest that you use racks, hanging racks. Use your window and walls, and I'll show you some examples. Use magnetic knife blocks that you can put on the actual wall instead of a big knife block. Um, store your plates and bowls and things in a sideboard instead of in the kitchen. So again, we'll talk a, a little about that. And utilize your hooks. Hooks are your best friend. Um, I do want to show you one thing. I don't know, um, sorry, I'm going to go over and get my props here. I don't know how many people walk in their front door and trip over boots, especially when you don't need them. So what I suggest is that if you have boots, you can have the short ones or long ones, you hang them up once you're not using them instead of having them at the front door. So that's just a little handy tip that I always use and all my boots are like that when I'm not using them. In the winter it's different, but at least in the summer they're not there. So these are a couple of ideas of the hanging racks. Now I know there's, uh, over the peninsula in some of them, there's actually a cupboard which really ruins the sight line into your living room. So if I owned that place, I would remove that and I would have a hanging um, rack from the ceiling so with a shelf so that you can put things on top of the shelf and you can also hang your pots and pans because pots and pans take up a lot of room. So that's what I actually have in my house because I have a very tiny kitchen. Now I have, so this is my house. This is my knife rack where we have all the knives on the wall. So they're up, out of the way. And this is also my house. So I have nowhere to store my uh, cutting boards. So I used a wall. And I also threw up a bit of art there so that it's an interesting thing to, to look at. So it's not just functional, it's actually pretty too. So it allows you to kind of play with the space and use your imagination to how you can use it. It doesn't have to be art, it could be anything else. I just happened to put that because I did. But I have all kinds of, my husband is a really good cook. He cooks pizza all the time and it, I was tripping over those pizza uh, pads or whatever they're called and uh, so we put them up on, on the wall. All right, so bedroom ideas. So I'm going to show you the sock patty because I know Manira was quite interested in that. Don't let me step on any little ones. Um, and so the soft patty is, this is how my husband puts the socks away. It drives me crazy because it takes up a lot of space. So we have the sock patty here, which actually takes the socks and makes them flat so that you can stack them in. You can see how they are. Or even if you're going to put them one on top of the other, you can um, uh, do that. And the amount of space that saves is amazing. It's, it's pretty shocking. So once uh, the presentation is over, I will show you how to do it, because it's really easy. Takes a little bit of time at the beginning, but then it is, um, you get used to it. So the other thing in the bedroom <laughs> is I suggest these low profile hangers. The difference that's going to make is pretty amazing. So instead of those thick ones, especially the ones when you get when you buy coats and they're, they're like got some sort of arch thing, they take up a lot of space. These are a lot better. Now, the other thing that is good about decluttering or that you need to know about decluttering is you also want the illusion of space. So when you're hanging your stuff up, 
instead of putting you know all the shirts there all the pants there all the skirts there for example um, do it by color so if you organize your clothes by color that will give you the real illusion of space so that you're and you'll be shocked how many black things you have <laughs> because everybody has lots of black things the other thing that I recommend is hooks so I use hooks for everything I use them in the bathroom I use them in the bedroom and so I actually have a thing about scarves so what I've done is I've gone to the dollar store and I have bought shower hooks and this is how I hang my um, scarves so you can do this in your closet in your front hall closet or you can do this in your bedroom closet wherever it makes sense or you can hang it on a hook and then you have everything there and again depending on your scarf fetish fetish um, you could play with it and make it quite beautiful and even put it on a wall Okay. All right. Um, okay, so the other thing is you want to fold your items to see them. So I do have samples of, I should put this closer, I'm sorry, um, uh, samples of t-shirts. So these are my t-shirts, they're little. My husband, I have all his t-shirts like this and I stack them in the drawers like that. So he actually can see what t-shirts, because before that he couldn't see anything and he'd pull everything out looking for the one he wants. Now that's not an issue. And I will tell you, I've been married eight years now and it was two years ago he asked me how to fold these. I was so impressed. I thought, be still my heart. So uh, the other thing is utilize hooks as much as possible. And we'll talk a bit about that when, when, I, um, when we talk about the bathroom. But here are some ideas. So there's this, the uh, sock patty. And over there are the two shirts. So that's how I've done my husband's um, shirts. Um, th this actually is a pretty new product. And I, I kind of like it because it allows you to separate and not it not be too much work um, the other thing is so if you look over here this is uh, in a bedroom and you can have hooks be art as well so you use your imagination you have a beautiful um, poster in your bedroom so maybe you add you know the hooks on the bottom and you have your your house coat or your pajamas or whatever on the bottom um, now I, I have this here because I didn't have a good picture of what I wanted to show you, but this is actually not a bad idea for your shoes if you have a lot. I have had a client where we actually um, found a way to hook the shoes on the wall and made an art installation so that, because she had a lot of shoes and a lot of them were blingy and it was lots of fun to do. So we had a lot of fun, but it was very functional for her because it was something that was making her crazy. So organizing your locker. I actually have a few ideas and I did work with uh, Manera on organizing her um, locker. So declutter first. Do you really need it? If it's in your locker, when was the last time you used it? Did you, do you even remember it was there? If not, well, maybe it's time to perch. So um, you want to make sure you display meaningful items. And when I say display, pack them in a way that you're, you can access them. Um, and make sure they're protected. I don't know about your lockers, but my son's locker is right in the basement. And the soot and dust and grime on there, if you put a piece of art in there unprotected, it's going to get ruined. Um, ensure you have a pathway to reach everything. So my recommendation is that you put everything in a U shape, right? So, so utilize every single wall, but make sure that you can stand there and touch everything. Otherwise, it's going to make you crazy. Um, stack in safe ways, so nothing precarious. Use clear bins, not paper boxes. Paper boxes are just asking for 
critters and and uh, bend and you know I they just never keep their form so um, clear plastic bins are the way to go label 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 and utilize your hooks so I have some examples here of um, utilizing hooks so you can see they, we, they use some hooks um, on the grates or whatever that's called um, and put their um, uh, golf clubs and things like that which I thought was really smart um, you can also get special shelving that go right on the hooks which is very practical um, and that way you can see your stuff um, we also, um, for uh, another client, we had, we bought those uh, black plastic shelves and we put them up there. Um, now, depending on, you know, your bike situation, you want to keep it up as much as possible so that it's as low profile as possible. And then this is always a good idea if you're storing a lot of weird, weirdly shaped things. So small bathroom. So again, the bathrooms um, in the some of the condos are tiny, so I recommend you remove the shower curtains and put up glass doors. You would so I have a very tiny bathroom at my house. I put in a glass door and I am shocked at how much space I have. I feel like having a party in there because it's so much bigger and so much brighter than having um, a. Uh, a shower curtain and they have foldable uh, glass doors at uh, Bath Depot. Use mirrors to add depth because the more mirrors you have the brighter it's going to be. Um, use mirrors with shelves uh, above your sink if you can um, or use mirrors with hidden shelving. So my son has a condo not far away and he bought uh, a mirror that's lighted uh, that has the the cabinet uh, shelves that pull out um, and use shelves in the bathtub area so I, I have put a little shelf just three tiers in my corner the corner of my bathtub and like on the wall and uh, that has really helped and um, show floating shelves as much as possible because you want to again give the illusion of space even though it's small so we've got some ideas here for hanging your towels. We've got some ideas for over the, the toilet. And there's a, a glass uh, door for the thing. And there's that medicine cabinet I was talking about. Okay. And small living spaces. So you're, you need storage. There's no question about having to get some storage. So. Um, couches with storage are a good idea. You can put your linens in there um, and, you know, any of your, let's say you, you have a, a blow-up bed for a company, you could put that in there. Coffee tables with storage, again, just for those small things that you want to hide. Low-profile storage and entertainment units. So in your living room, you can utilize that space. So if you have a console, um, you can put your um, wine glasses in there along with your plates and things instead of using that in your kitchen. And floor lamps with built-in tables. So again, I have a very small space and my favorite reading spot has a floor lamp with a little table on it and that's where my coffee or my wine goes when I'm reading. And sideboards are a good idea. Okay, so I have just given you some examples here. So, you know, there's a couch with pull-out storage. There's some floating shelves. There's a lamp over there with a table. And there's some low-profile um, um, console entertainment units there. Okay, and of course, there's coffee tables with storage. So now what? You've decluttered. You've used your imagination. Um, there is one thing I forgot to mention. In um, a kitchen, I have taken one of those um, suspension rods and put it across the window. And instead of hanging curtains, I actually hung um, some, um, not pots and pans, but uh, what the cooking ut utensils. Ah, there they go. Um, so 
we've got our stuff in the middle. We're going to donate, dispose, recycle, and sell. So I have some um, information here about donating. So we've got Value Village, the Salvation Army, New Circles. I don't know if anybody knows New Circles, but they've got a, um, a prom um, program as well as they have set it up. They help um, newcomers to Canada and they've set it all up as a, um, a retail experience for people so that people can actually choose what they want. So I'm a big fan. Uh, your condo donation boxes, community centers, hospital schools, shelters. Second Life Books is a place that actually will pick up your books for free and donate them to um, correctional facilities, um, children's book banks, and women's shelters. Um, Habitat for Humanity, furniture banks, and more. So I have a list of contacts for most of these places and I go there a lot to all these places. So recycling, we've got Staples uh, Canada and Ikea. So Staples will take your batteries, your um, inks, and your pens. So pens shouldn't go in the garbage. They actually can be recycled. Ikea will take batteries as well as your light bulbs. CNIB, which is the Canadian National Institute for the Blind, has a great program called Phone It Forward where you can take your cell phones and donate it to them. They securely wipe it and then they put accessible applications on there so that, and then give them to their um, clients. There's also the Electronics Recycling Association that will take all your electronics, refer securely wipe them, refurbish them, and then donate them to community centers and schools. And then of course you've got the city pickup and scrap metal pickup. Again, I just want to re reiterate, if you can't see it, you're not using it. Use your imagination and be creative. And it's a process. It's not going to happen all in one day. And that's it. Thank you. Okay. We're gonna have Steve and Samantha come out. Go ahead. I'll come stand here, so we can go both together. Hi. Hello. Hey. So I'm gonna let Sam talk about a little bit about what she does with Diamond, mm -hmm. um, and then I'll wrap things up with what Diamond, who we are, and uh, how we connect with all of this. Uh, please. Yeah, so I'm going to start, I, my name is Samantha Sebastian, I'm Senior Designer and Sales Manager at Diamond. So what we specialize in, we um, have expert designers, so we can provide solutions for pretty much anywhere in your home. So it can go from garage, pantry, um, all the closets in your home. We also do living room, um, wall design, around the mantle, we can do your kitchen, etc. So um, going with what Claire mentioned, like the next stage after decluttering would be, like if you need, um, hey, like I just want to add a couple of um, boxes and baskets and stuff, we can provide that. We have a retail store for a lot of storage solutions. And to Claire's point as well, we have a bunch of hangers, different types of hangers. But if you want a more specialized or you want to take the next step and you want a designer to come in and redesign the space, we can provide that option. So we have a bunch of designers, so you will be paired up with a designer who will work closely with you. Um, and we have different price points and qualities and materials, so um, we'll be able to give you what you want from anywhere from a, a concept or your dream kitchen, or if you want to resell it, we, we can work with your budget and provide this solution for you. Thank you, Sam. So that was Sam. Um, guys, first of all, I just want to quickly say thank you to both Munira and Claire and Sam for getting this little event going. Uh, it's such a pleasure to you know be a part of the community and come in and speak about our company in relation with what uh, Manira and Claire are doing. Uh, one of the biggest beliefs in Diamond is that every property that we're opening, so first of all, we're a storage company at the core of everything. From storage comes custom closets, custom kitchens, we have fully furnished offices for you to rent out of and work out of. We have open concept spaces for you to uh, conduct your business from. Uh, 
uh, from shredding services to, uh, as she mentioned, a huge variety. I would say approximately 1,800 different SKUs for you to select and help you organize any part of your home office. And um, while I was going, uh, looking at this presentation, I came up with a quick little idea. So we will, Diamond will offer everybody here a 15% discount on any products that you wish to purchase. Simply go to the website or connect with Manira or Claire and they will get in touch with me and we'll have those items shipped right out to you at no cost, okay? Um, the other thing I wanted to quickly touch base on is uh, what, how Diamond will play a role in helping you declutter uh, or helping the, you stage your home. We have a very, very large fleet uh, where we can send a truck out to you, move those items away so your home is staged. Now, when you're decluttering, not necessarily, as uh, to Claire's point, uh, we will always buy and buy and buy and accumulate and just not use all of these items. Eventually, there comes a time where you have to declutter. And when you get to that point, there's always going to be those things that you just don't want to part from. And maybe you don't have enough space left in your uh, storage within your condominium. Diamond can provide you with a small storage solution that's not going to cost you an exuberant amount of money. Something as little as $100 a month, or even $50 or $70 a month. Just an additional space that will help you reimagine and recreate your own space. Um, what I always like to say is form and functionality. You know how you want your house and your space to work for you. Claire and Manira and Samantha here can take that and inspire you and put it into play. Um, I mean, if, if if at any point any of you do visit the website and you require any assistance, my honest opinion would be to get in touch with Claire or Manira who will get in touch with us because we'd like to capture that audience through them. Because of, if it wasn't for Manira and for Claire, I wouldn't be here, Samantha wouldn't be here. This is why uh, this is such a great job that you know, we, I, we got a chance to be in front of the community and talk about uh, Diamond. The other great news is right now Diamond has three locations, one in Bur uh, Brampton, one in Oshawa, one in Etobicoke. Etobicoke is our largest facility at about 550,000 square feet. Uh, we generate our own electricity. Every single property has its own solar installation. We're very green friendly. Uh, and the greatest part about the entire company itself is the owners have built the entire company under the safety for women. How many of you have gone to storage or dealt with storage and walked into a storage facility and realized this is weird, it's too dark, or it's not clean enough. So I'm just gonna run a quick two minute clip, I'm gonna let it play. This gives you an idea of what the storage front looks like. I don't wanna get too much into it because I want you to be able to go and visit this site, take a look for yourself, and be amazed is what I say. I mean, there isn't a single day that somebody doesn't come to our location, walk around and say, what does storage have to do with racking or kitchen? I say, it's all in the name of organizing it's all in the name of decluttering um and in with all of that in mind this is where the synergy occurred and we all decided that we're going to put our hands together and be here and uh, uh, show you around i would love i welcome all of you to come to the facility uh, take a tour anybody you see at the front there simply ask them that you love to take a tour of the property this is particularly our uh, uh etobicoke uh, property uh, in total diamond will be opening 90 locations this year, aside from the ones that are already operating, um, Brampton, Etobicoke, and Oshawa. Burlington will be opening up at the end of Q3, so just about around fall, and uh, so will Whitney. And in the following year, we're opening the one very first of its kind condominium. Now, it's in development. By 2025 or 26, it should complete. This will be the first building that's a condominium that has storage inside, that has offices, that has a wine cellar. And when we say storage, it's not going to be your traditional condo storage that you're used to. You're going to see larger spaces, spaces that actually make sense for you to house your belongings that you don't have to keep it within your house. This is the wine cellar. Um, not everybody is a uh, enophiliac. Not everybody likes to have a lot of wine. When you can have, when you have it, you don't drink it, right? But there are a lot of people that like to collect some bottles we have space for you to store that as well. Everything in that entire property is humidity and temperature controlled. You're never outside. Your belongings are always on the inside too. Uh, 
So yeah, uh, whenever you have the chance, do stop by at the Tobiko facility, which is the closest from here. And of course, if you need any of our services, don't forget to get in touch with Munira or Claire, and uh, we'll be right there to help you out. That's it. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you, Claire. Thank you, Samantha and Keith. And uh, here are some resources. Uh, each of us have blogs. Uh, we have connections to uh, different individuals or service providers that can help as well. And really, it's as you can see, it's a couple of steps, right? You start, really, you're starting with a mindset. You're starting with, why am I doing this? Do I need to do this? Do I have the time to do it? How do I do it? Then, you know, you're, you're moving on to being able to actually <clears throat> furnish a little bit more organization and then store it as well. So that's why we kind of came together to offer you a bit of, um, offer you some ideas and inspirations around that full service, one-stop shop um, approach to doing it yourself. You can do it yourself. This is kind of your mission. <laughs> That you need to follow and you can decide how you want to approach it but there are people there to help you as well so did anybody have any specific questions about um, anything that we talked about decluttering what brought you guys here today besides you need to declutter anything specific how to maximize okay Question for you guys. When you're talking about maximizing square footage, how many people have a lot of stuff on the ground? No? You find you have a lot of stuff on the ground? Is that where you're finding you're losing a lot of square footage? Or are you losing it in other places? Other places? Paul, tell me. Um, well, I like the idea of banging pots and pans. Hmm. Just more efficiency, I suppose, more efficient. That's something that um, I learned that actually was kind of a surprise to me when Claire was talking about, especially in the kitchen, using things like your windows. So she had this, like, it's like a, a pole that has springs. So you put it in the ledge. What's it called? It's a curtain rod. It's a curtain. It's, it's a essentially a curtain. It's a okay, I've never even thought rod. of it as a curtain rod. <laughs> In my window. Okay, that makes sense. Um, and she added this curtain rod to my window, and from that, I hung my like my um, oven mitts, uh, my like my little Febreze duster thing. Like, I find that bringing stuff up and hanging it actually does a lot. Now, if you're gonna hang everything in your home, it is gonna start feeling like okay, I'm in a rainforest. Like, what is going on here? So it is. You, you do want to find ways to hang things inside behind closed doors. So something that um, Claire introduced me to as well, which you probably already know about, is the pack system through IKEA. So having something like a wardrobe that not only has the space to go up and down, so where you can hang you know, your clothing, but also has shelves that you can actually now use the drawers um, making sure that the space that you're using to hang is just enough for what you're hanging. So you could have a small section that's for all of your jackets, but then you can have another section that brings up these uh, slats. You can actually move them, brings them up so that, you know, you're, that's where you're getting a lot of the efficiency. Funny enough, we're losing a lot of efficiency in dead space. It's just it's like open space. It doesn't have anything that you can stick a box in because it doesn't have any any walls around it type of thing. What what are other areas that people are having issues with? Do you go ahead? I found that I have a lot of plants, so I was looking at ways to reorganize. Plants. A lot of plants. Yeah, and especially when in spring you after spring you have to sorry after fall you have to bring in every side. It got mm -hmm. so hard. So this year my outdoors daddy. Oh no. Well so there are ways to do that. Um, you know, to to hang your plants in such a way that are keeping them first of all so you can reach them, because that's always my issue. If I, if I can't reach it, then that's not gonna help me at all. Uh, but there are ways to work with your window so that you ha don't have them 
necessarily taking up counter space or space on your table. So we can work on that when I come give you your three free hours. Oh, <laughs> Sally, They're you're going to bring up plans, but you actually brought up something also interesting that I think a lot of us do and something that Claire mentioned. And I have to tell you, Costco, my husband would not allow me to get a Costco membership until like last year. And my team will tell you it's true. The only reason I got one is because he had an event and he needed to get drinks from Costco. <laughs> That's how I was allowed to get a Costco membership because, and it's true, the fear is you go yeah. and everything is so big, right? Like you, and you see every, you see, and I actually bought into, and I'm not someone who has, likes to collect a lot of stuff, but I bought into those two big bottles of shampoo and conditioner. Like I have four of them. They're completely taking up underneath my sink, but I saved 10 bucks, <laughs> right? I feel like I'm losing 10 years of my life because I can't find anything. But that is a, that's another, it's kind of a trap because you're saving money and you're getting more things and you're stocked up in case like, you know, there's COVID or whatever happened, you have all this stuff, but really you don't really need all that stuff. So that's when we're talking about mindset is just kind of being more, um, you know, more careful about and conscious about the deal. Because sometimes the deal has a consequence. It's not just money. It, it could also be the fact that it's taking up that space. And if you're anything like me, I spent tons of money on storage from Amazon. Like at one point, I think I just spent like $500 of all these different gadgets to fill in the shampoo and conditioner. You know what I mean? So that's another trap that you have to look so out for I just well. want to say um, a, a little bit about that. So one of the things that I don't think people realize is that your uh, face products and your shampoos and your cleaning products, they all have an expiry date. So they lose their efficacy after a couple of years. So if you bought the shampoo five years ago, it's no good anymore. And I've noticed that they're putting expiry dates on them now. I don't know, like even rubbing alcohol has an expiry date because people were keeping it forever and it wasn't effective anymore. And then they realized, well, you shouldn't be keeping it for five years. So just remember that it loses its efficacy and that's really important to remember. Things also like makeup, yeah, they, makeup they, have to they become toxic after a while. Yeah. Um, just for the uh, person who's about the plants, there's uh, this ladder you can get. Um, I can't remember where it's from, but it's a ladder you can lean against the wall, and you can get pots which have hooks on them, so you can save a lot of space yeah. in that sense. That's cool. Good suggestion. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> um, does anyone else have any ideas? Monica? I have a question. Okay. So, uh, for me, like, I, I go through a lot of I go through more last year than everybody. So when I'm able to, I like to be mindful. So for example, the cost of crap, um, like I would rather purchase something larger. I do go through the products, but um, because like I don't want to be buying multiple bottles or like having all of those plastics. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So is there like a balance of like you know like being mindful of the environment, but yeah. still like being able to live with mm -hmm. <laughs> That's that's actually a good question, and um, so I'll just you have. Oh, I do something that will help with that. Okay, go. For yeah, it. Um, there's a service called Satinetti, and they uh, help deliver things by by car, and they they deliver you to shampoos and household products and jars, and then you return the jars to them. Right. And so I pretty much limited all the waste that I had because I just started oh, using that cool. instead. We stopped during COVID, but then, but there's, you know, there's no operating and they deliver to you. So you can like toiletries. Yeah, toiletries help. <laughs> What's it called? Sapanetti. Uh, like, it's a company that makes like the toilet paper and the toilet paper. Yeah. 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 Okay, so that's great because I was going to say, I have a place that's not far from me that is also, um, uh, you bring your glass jars and they fill it up with the shampoos and everything and it's all uh, environmental and there is a balance to be had. Um, glass, anything glass for example, glass can be recycled 
over and over and over and over and over again. But plastics have, has a finite life. So I'm a big fan of getting glass anything if I can. Um, there are also some companies out there, and sometimes it's a little more money, but the companies out there that um, are trying to reduce the plastic and also um, using some bio, bio, biodegradable um, products themselves. So, so um, it's looking for that kind of thing. But also, I love this idea of them delivering it to you. So here I am driving, you know, 20 miles to get, get my jar full. Um, Do they but, charge for delivery? I don't remember, but they, they had a specific day that they would come, and then you just pay a deposit on the jars, and then when you return the jars to them, they give they you the oh. next product. Oh, they wow. have all kinds of things like uh, the kitchen scrubbies that we use that are usually plastic. Yeah. They have ones that are made with long shells and things, so right. they're biodegradable. They break down. That's great. I'm going to look them up because mm -hmm. that's an excellent idea. And, um, you know, right now, I think there are more companies that are trying to be more ecologically uh, friendly or responsible. So, so it's worth it to do some research. So I'm going to look them up. Thank you for that. You did have a question, though. No, no, that was, was that was what it was? Okay. okay. <laughs> so I love it. It, was it sounds fantastic. Yeah, that actually, I, and the containers piece is something that is another trap. I know I was talking earlier about jars being my kryptonite, but I feel like boxes, gift boxes, um, things like that, they do also, you feel like you need to keep them because you're gonna use them later. Um, and something that can actually help, it's kind of like keeping a food diary, but keeping a clutter diary. So, you know, when you're actually approaching you're, you're under your sink or in the kitchen or whatever it is, actually write down the things that are in there. So before you even start to throw them away or declutter them, write them down and you start seeing, okay, I have seven jars. I have one spoon. <laughs> like, you know, you'll, you start also seeing like, what do you really need? Um, and maybe there are things that you actually need that are gonna make it a little bit more efficient for you. So we always think decluttering is about getting rid of everything, but actually it's not. It's getting rid of the things that, like Claire said, that you don't need, but also integrating things that make um, the space a little bit more efficient, but your life more efficient. So maybe instead of needing to use three products, you have something that's an all-in-one or it's just one thing that you just need one product. So I highly recommend making um, this kind of like the clutter, the clutter diary. Um, and the other thing I would do after you've actually had a chance to declutter is make, keep that list and maybe keep it in. And actually this is something Claire did for us as well. One, because you moved everything around. We didn't know where anything was. We're like, oh, this makes so much sense that this should be here. But I had it like in my bedroom. I don't know why. It was supposed to be in the kitchen. Don't ask. But don't ask. So I, but, I just yeah. want to build on, on some of the things that you're saying. Um, one of the things that um, I was talking about is using your imagination. So for those gift boxes and things like that, there are other ways to wrap your gifts other than using gift boxes or gift bags or whatever. So I always, um, at Christmas time, I always have a little blog about the different things that you can use. Like you use regular brown paper and put a pretty uh, bow on it. Get your kids to um, color on it and when you're giving a gift to grandma and grandpa. I only, so I, I love scarves, um, so when I give a bottle of wine at Christmas or a bottle of something, um, I wrap it in a scarf and I give it to them. I also wrap things um, for baby showers or wedding, sh wedding showers I use um, uh, tea towels to wrap the gifts and baby showers I use little um, blankets to wrap the gifts so that there's no paper that is there. So again, it's all about using your imagination um, in order to cut down on some of the waste and the clutter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And do you guys have any more questions or ideas? We actually have heard some great ideas here too. So before we head out, there's a little bit of dessert. So before everyone feels running to re-energize its own sugar. 
I also want to really address the fact that we don't have a lot of time. Okay, a lot of us are busy. Honestly, I'm. I would love to declutter. I would love to, but I just don't have time. And this is where um, I just want to emphasize that there are people that can help. There are resources. Take advantage of them. You know, take advantage of blogs. Um, I come in and have a consultation with Diamond. Actually, I was completely blown away by this facility when he actually took me to like a co-work space that he had in the back of the building. Um, when we were talking about the different um, design ideas we had, he actually had a boardroom that we can sit in. So it's, you know, when you don't have a lot of time, you need to maximize the time. So look for one-stop shop options. Look for one place where you can get everything. And I'm not just talking about Costco. Um, I'm talking, because trust me, you're going to get everything and more. Uh, but it can also be a person or a resource or a blog or whatever it is. So don't, sometimes I personally feel really isolated uh, when I start decluttering, because I do it on my own, because my husband is like, not going to want to do that. He's like, why am I wasting my time on that? I want to play golf. Like, no, what, I don't even understand why you're doing it. For me, it's like, I can't even focus. Like, I can't work if I don't clean my space for at least half an hour before I get down to the business, right? So it's okay. It, we don't all, we, sometimes we think we have to do everything on our own. That's not true. We, there are resources out there. And sometimes you feel like, I don't want to spend too much money. I should be able to do this on my own. But it's sometimes okay to value your time over money, right? right? If there is that opportunity, yeah, go and, for it. And to use your help. You know, there are a lot of resources out there. Um, and there's nothing wrong with using your help and getting maybe a fresh perspective. The other thing is sometimes all you need is a little bit of a boost. Mm -hmm. So I'll come in, work with you for a couple of hours, and then you're on a roll. You know, the momentum has started and you're good to go. So it doesn't have to be for the whole thing. You can just get a little boost and, and then, you know, you're on your way. Maybe some new ideas, maybe, maybe just getting started with that closet that you were looking at thinking, oh my God, that's going to fall on my head. Um, you know, that kind of thing. So sometimes you just need a little help, not a lot. And the boost could be just coming up with a plan. Yeah. Like having a plan of action. Because when you're looking at it, it's really overwhelming and you can't really think about how to compartmentalize everything. Um, so, you know, that is something, that's a resource that's out there for you guys as well. So I hope you had a few great takeaways. Um, we're, we're all of us are here to support. Uh, when it comes to me, I have lots of personal experience, but I would definitely be the expert in I'm thinking of moving or, you know, my parents need help or, you know, we have an estate we need to clear. What do we do? I'm definitely your resource there. When it comes to getting down to that nitty gritty, you're ready to get started. How do you do it? Claire is definitely someone you want to tap into as a resource. And when you want to start moving that stuff, Getting it into storage because you want to, you know, maybe renovate or do something else with, you know, these items. Maybe you don't want to get rid of them. You want them to be in a secure place. Definitely reach out to Geep. Samantha is going to talk to you guys about, and she has talked to you guys, but if you're, if you want to take the conversation further, she's going to talk to you about how to customize your space. Because one of the things at Harborview Estates, who here has the closets on each side and the bed in the middle who has that set up why is that set up around why i can't let me tell you that kind of stuff it's actually really cool when you i've worked with a lot of designers because i'm always trying to figure out how do i make this place look bigger because no one's going to fit their double in here they have a queen um, and it's it's actually really cool how you can just shift things around and reuse that space in a different way even, you know, as an alternative for another space in your, your home. But those are things, I don't know about you guys, but I just, that doesn't come to me. So having a conversation with a designer is definitely helpful. And lastly, I want to actually introduce Kyle. I'm going to have you come up here. He didn't have a speaking part today. But he is, he's someone that um, 
definitely, you definitely want to consider when you're thinking about getting rid of your stuff. We gave you some options of things that you can do, but when you have a lot and you need some help, um, I definitely turn to Got Junk, and that's not a commercial. I, I really do work with these and guys. Yeah, guys, uh, I mean, I'm sure many of you have probably already used the services before. Uh, I kind of uh, introduced a new position for uh, Toronto franchise about five years ago, so I'm a commercial account manager. So. If Monira or any one of these people uh, refers you to us, um, pretty much you call me directly, grab one of my business cards, and it's not like we're going to price you off of a rate card. We're going to go over your budget, work together, and then uh, we're going to kind of formulate a plan on uh, how to get rid of the stuff. So it's not, you know, I know, I, I just like to address the fact that a lot of people think our services is really expensive. And sometimes it can be, depending on what the items are. But why we do the free no obligation estimates is so you guys can see that and see you know maybe it is a really quick job that's really cheap or maybe it's something a little bit more complex that'll take some time uh so there's always um, a free plan available you can always call me i can do a free estimate you can send some pictures over email um you know text message any of that stuff and what do you got to lose really right it's just a quote <laughs> hell i have a question because a lot of people probably don't think about junk or got junk services because they're like, I don't, I just want a little bit of stuff. Like, how small can the job be? Well, guys, we actually uh, did a little bit of marketing here. I don't know if any of you saw the, the YouTube commercials recently, but uh, we now cut our minimum charge, our single item charge in half, and we're offering single items. It could be like sofa, fridge, something like that, for $69. Uh, usually lately that's $139, so uh, some good savings there, cut out about uh, 50%. Okay, yeah. cool. So if you have something you need to get rid of um, and uh, it's a small item, you could you could check and, it. And listen, if it's something small and say a fridge or a couch or something really small, well, just call me directly and, you know, obviously if it's just, you know, a little basket or something, well, we'll charge a call. Cal's got a lot of deals, so yeah. I would not hesitate to call him because I'm always getting, like, these gift cards and things, not to put you on the spot, but yeah, okay. I, like I definitely that. would call Kyle if you have any, any junk that you need to get rid of. So that's about it. Guys, thank you so much for coming. Um, please, uh, if you have a friend that you think could appreciate a gift bag, we have tons. So we'd love to give away some more of these gift bags. There's some dessert. The room is open. We're here if you have any questions. And thank you so much for coming out. We really appreciate it.